Good evening, day four of emotional evolution. I've been considering for the last couple of days the significance of the way we think about the problems that we face and the challenges that we face on a couple of different levels. So first of all, the way we treat our problems and our challenges, um, like even, for example, mental health issues, we can be seeing them as dysfunctions, as problems, as, you know, being fucked up, if you like, like just we make a judgment around them and we often place people into a box within a concept and give them a label and in our minds they will be like that forevermore now that we've given them a label it's the same with children like sometimes i had a child that would turn up and they on that day might act like a sport brat but rather than me going they're a sport brat forever and ever it's like that was just their moment in that day or one day my daughter might turn up a bit shy and rather than me defining her as a shy child and telling everybody she's a shy child I would just accept that that's how she was in that moment. But it's sort of become a little bit deeper than that for me now because I'm recognizing that the concept that we give ourselves and other people, if you like, but mostly ourselves, the concept that we give ourselves and what we think about ourselves and the way we see our problems actually are who we think we are and not who we really are. Who we think we are is the person that needs somebody else or something else to fix them, to make them right. We might be um, not attractive enough. Our hair might not be right. Um, we might be too emotional. We might be an angry person. We might be a depressed person. All of those things that we label ourselves as. And we're pretending to be this identity. And it's actually quite beautiful because the reason we're pre pretending to be this identity is so that in that we can turn around and find who we really are. We're being something that we're not so that we can go, hmm, actually, that's who I really am. I'm not this. I'm learning about this and I'm integrating this into myself. This is not who I am. And it is an integration. The experiences, the traumas, the depression, the shyness, the insecurities. It's like these are all part of our human experience in this moment. And if we integrate them and make them into us, bring them into us, bring them into this whole place, we don't have to make them our identity or put a hook on them and like forever and ever and ever we're going to be this and this is our our cross to bear for the rest of our lives no these are the opportunities we have to see who we're not they're the very opportunities that are going to help us to see ourselves more clearly and when we bring them into ourselves and integrate them into our lives we're imbuing them with a higher consciousness a vibration of love and acceptance and that vibration is incredibly healing and this goes for the body. If there's a part of our body that we don't like, you know, we're not slim enough or fit enough or handsome enough or whatever it is. Every time we go, that part of us is not enough, we divide it from ourselves. We create separation. And in the separation, there's no joy. The separation is what creates the suffering and the pain. Sometimes I wonder if the pain and the suffering we feel is actually defined by the distance between who we think we are and who we really are. So all of those bits of yourself you've been denying and wanting to change, they're everything you are in this moment. Embrace them. Allow them to be the opportunity that you need to see who you really are. It doesn't mean don't you don't take action. It just means you integrate them into who you really are. Because by doing that, by bringing them in, by creating a wholeness around it, you are just raising the vibration. This is like a magical thing you can do for yourself. And it's so incredibly healing and empowering. 
they're my thoughts for today. I hope you've had a beautiful day. Sending you love.